Now, what exactly is a normal force? I mean, what is it? Now, perhaps in math you heard of the word normal line, just as you heard of the word the tangent line. And let's talk about a normal line. So let's say this is, I don't know, line L or something. And we have a normal line, or a line normal to L, which we'll call it N. A normal line is basically a line that is perpendicular to another line. So it forms right angles with another line. So the normal force must be a force that is perpendicular to something. And so let's use an example to illustrate it. Let's say we have a horizontal surface and we have a box. And let's say the box has a mass of 10 kilograms. Now the box will exert a downward weight force on the surface. Every object with mass has a weight force on it. And due to the force of gravity, it's going to pull it towards the Earth. Now the surface must be exerting an upward force on the box because right now the box is resting on the surface and it's in a state of equilibrium. So that means that this downward force must be canceled by an equal and opposite upward force. And this force is known as the normal force. Some textbooks might use the letter N to represent that it's a normal force. And so that's what it is. It's a force that is perpendicular to the surface. So let's say if we have an incline and there's a box here, the normal force will be directed in this direction. It's perpendicular to the incline plane. So it forms right angles uh, with this particular surface. Now, how can we increase or decrease the normal force? Is it possible to do that? And it turns out that it is. So let's say we have a box on a horizontal surface once again, and here's the weight force. If we apply a downward force, the normal force will increase. The reason being is the surface has to exert an upward force to support the weight of the object and also the downward apply force that you uh, pushed on the object. So that's how you can increase the normal force. It's by pressing down on the object against the surface. Now, if you wish to decrease the normal force, what you need to do is lift up the object. And one way in which you can accomplish that, that is not a horizontal surface, is by attaching a rope to the object and applying an upward tension force. And so by doing this, you're going to reduce the stress that's on the surface. So it doesn't have to apply such a strong force in order to support the weight of the object. So that's how you can decrease the normal force. It's by applying an upward tension force on the object. Now let's talk about how we can calculate the normal force. So let's say we have a 20 kilogram block on a horizontal surface. Calculate the normal force that the surface exerts on the block. Feel free to pause the video and try this problem. So the first thing we need to do is draw a free body diagram. We have an upward normal force and a downward weight force. Now, because the object is in a state of equilibrium, the sum of all the forces in the y direction must be equal to zero. So what are the forces in the y direction? Well, we have an upward normal force, so that's going to have a positive sign associated with it. And we have a downward weight force. So because it's going in a negative y direction, we're going to put minus w. And that's equal to zero. So let's focus on this section of the equation. The normal force minus the weight force is zero. So moving this to the other side, we have that the normal force is equal to the weight force for this example. And the weight force is simply mg. So when you have a box resting on a horizontal surface with nothing else happening, the normal force 
is equal to the wave force. So in this case, it's going to be a mass of 20 times the gravitational acceleration of 9.8. So let me pull out my calculator and type in 20 times 9.8, which will give us 196 newtons. So that is the force that the surface exerts on a 20 kilogram block. Now let's go over the second situation. So we're going to use the same mass, 20 kilograms, and this time we're going to apply a downward force of, let's say, 300 newtons. Let's calculate the upward normal force that the surface is going to exert on the block. And keep in mind, we still have the downward weight force. So based on the last example, go ahead and calculate the normal force in this instance. So the block is still at rest. It's in a state of equilibrium in the y direction. So we could say that the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to 0. Now we have two forces in the in the downward y direction, one force in the upward y direction. So the normal force is going to have a positive sign associated with it. The wave force will have a negative sign. And the applied force also has a negative sign because it's going in the negative y direction. So now we're going to set those three things equal to 0. So we have Fn minus W minus Fa equal to 0. Now moving these two terms to the other side, we're going to have that the normal force is the sum of the weight force and the applied force. Now the weight force is not going to change. It's mg, which is 20 times 9.8. So that's going to be 196 newtons. We don't have to recalculate that. The applied force is 300. So in this case, the normal force that the surface exerts on a block is 196 plus 300, which is 496. So as you can see, whenever you apply a downward force on the block, you increase the normal force that the surface has to exert on the block in order to keep the system at equilibrium in the y direction. Now let's go over the other situation. So this time, we are going to lift up the block with an upward tension force of, let's say, 120 newtons. So go ahead and calculate the normal force that the surface exerts on a block using this information. So let's write an expression. This time we have two upward forces. That is the normal force and the tension force and they both will carry a positive sign since they're going in the positive y direction and the weight force is negative. So let's replace this with zero and let's solve for the normal force. So if we move the weight force to the other side it's going to be positive w and if we move the tension force to the other side it's going to be negative t. So we can see that the normal force is the difference between the weight force and the tension force in this example. So the weight force, we know it's 196 newtons based on the last two examples. The tension force is 120. And so the normal force is 76. So as you can see, if you apply an upward tension force, you will decrease the normal force. Now here's a question for you. Is it possible to have a negative normal force? So let's say if the upward tension force was greater than the downward weight force, which is 196. Let's say if the upward tension force was 250 newtons. According to the expression that we had before, the normal force is the difference between the weight force and the tension force. And so in this example, that would indicate that it's 196 minus 250, which is negative 54 newtons. So is it possible to have a negative normal force? If you get this answer, what does that tell you? Well, what it means is that 
the block is no longer in contact with the surface. And so the net force in the y direction is no longer zero. We actually have an acceleration in the y direction. When the tension force exceeds the weight force, the object will now begin to move up. So it's going to lose contact with the ground. And once that happens, there is no normal force. And so this equation only applies if the tension force is less than the weight force. I mean, if it's equal to it, then the normal force is zero. So I guess you can say less than or equal to. But if it exceeds the weight force, the rope is going to lift the object up. And if it's no longer in contact with the surface, there is no normal force. Now, the next thing you need to be able to do is calculate the normal force on an incline. So I'm just going to give you the equation for this type of situation. So here's the normal force. It's perpendicular to the surface, as always. And in this case, the normal force is equal to the weight force, which is mg, but times cosine of the angle of the incline. And so as that angle increases from 0 to 90 degrees, the normal force will decrease. Now, in another video, I explain how to derive that equation and also some problems associated with it if you want to work that out. So I'm going to post some links in the description section of this video and feel free to check that out when you get a chance. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It's a great way to show appreciation and thanks again for watching.